Hi, it's Dan Cunliffe, Managing Director at Pangea. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's our July video log, and uh, once again, we are on the go. Um, I was uh, sort of asked by my team to give a little uh, David Bowie uh, shout out because uh, of the brick in the wall behind us. So um, it's about the best background we could get at short notice for the vlog, but as you know, we do these as soon as we get a chance uh, being on the run. Um, a couple of really interesting things going on uh, in July. Uh, Wimbledon is now done and dusted. Well done to Roger and uh, Gobin for, um, for, for winning. Gobin for her first Wimbledon title. Pretty interesting. But um, we are very much focused on the world of sport and telemetry um, at Pangaea this month and um, sort of for the next couple of weeks working on what we're calling the big data cycle. Now, if you've not heard about the big data cycle, please do go and uh, check it out in the credits in YouTube. But we are focusing on one of our colleagues, Terence, who is an avid cycler and is um, doing the Ride London on 30th of July for a wonderful charity to help, um, I suppose, young children and um, young kids with uh, mental um, stresses. And so it's called STEM4, and um, we'll also have the details in this YouTube clip by going to go and donate. But what we're doing uh, in true Pangea fashion is doing something a little bit more interesting. Um, Terence is riding around um, on his bicycle, obviously training, but what we're doing with the bicycle is we're starting to capture information around, um, I suppose, different parts of telemetry. One in particular is the pollution as well as his timing and how he can improve his cycling. So two things we've started to see, and we'll do a little bit more PR on it, is um, in terms of the pollution uh, we're collecting, we're collecting three types, uh, good, bad and average, and uh, we're doing that at every sort of 10 second intervals. Um, we're also then helping him improve his time. So how we're doing that is we're using uh, various parts of the telemetry co collected by the device in order to help him improve. So some of the key things he's already done, he's constantly getting faster, which is quite interesting. But uh, with the Tour de France being on, we're actually trying to see if he can get down to Tour de France pace, which um, is very doubtful. Uh, and uh, just apologies for any background noise, we are just uh, sort of somewhere in the middle of um, Serbian actually today. But just back to the Tour de France. So Terence has um, improved his time constantly, but he's actually about 25 to 30 seconds per mile off the Tour de France guys by understanding more about his um, timing, I guess, and how he's getting faster and faster. So uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll be doing a bit of PR on that and um, sharing the data. The team have done an exceptional job using um, different mediums, obviously across social, but a new one called Stella, uh, which has been telling exceptional stories about how we are using IoT to improve Terence's time, but also tell um, tell the tale, I guess, of like how the IoT can help in sport. Um, for those of you who read or have seen um, the information, um, one of the very well-known companies out there, IBM, did some work with the World uh, Cycling Championships to improve their, uh, I guess, times, but also the way that they were uh, cycling and improving their speeds, etc. So um, there's a lot of good to be had, I think, in sport with IoT. Um, it's a natural. Uh, thing that I'd like to get more in touch with because I'm, I'm become sports mad, but yeah, that's what the team are working on right now. Um, so, how we're how we're collecting this data is we have a device that is um, in partnership with one of our uh, ecosystem partners, WRD, and what the device is doing is it's collecting these pollution points every 10 seconds. And there's quite an interesting story behind this because in the world of construction right now, um, there is going to be coming. Uh, versions of legislation that says you need to kind of track what pollution is going on on your construction side. Right now the people are actually only tracking that once I suppose every month or once every longer period of time and you're paying something between 300 and 500 pounds every time you do that. The reason for that is that you know you need to be able to track and show that you are keeping control of the pollution on your construction site. Uh, we believe that this device will not only be cheaper over the term, but it will also be able to take more real-time um, pollution indication. And um, so we think there is a product, and anyone who deals in the construction space, please do get in touch. We can we can take you through it and maybe show you where there's opportunity within your existing clients. Um, other things going on at the moment, so I think most of the channel or the telecoms uh, channel is uh, preparing for Channel Live, which is the 12th and 13th of September at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, we're doing a lot of work in terms of getting our stand ready, getting uh, ready for our strategy. A um, couple of things uh, that we hope you can come and see on our stand is we're looking at all sorts of things in the world of IoT, one being connected beer. Um, which is uh, definitely worth coming to have a look at. Uh, we're also looking at connected tools. Um, we obviously have our uh, very, very successful pre-Ethernet product, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Um, and the whole, the whole piece for us is to continue with this standpoint that we are the channel's choice for IoT. The channel is coming to Pangea to help them uncover new revenues with existing clients in IoT. And we've got a couple of specific products that we can help you 
take to your clients um, and drive some really strong contracts. So please do come and um, have a look at that. As I said, 12th and 13th of September, but do get in touch before so we can definitely book in a slot to come see myself or even one of our sales team. Um, finally, just wanted to do a little bit of conversation on pre-Ethernet. So we've been doing pre-Ethernet, which is all about driving revenues out of your Ethernet sales. Uh, for about 18 months, we've won awards for it. Um, I feel like we've done probably the most work in this market, and we've been looking at how we improve the product. So we have, we're not calling it version two, but we have the upgraded version of pre-Ethernet, and um, I'd really encourage anyone to get in touch with us because we've uncovered that we can probably find you between about 20 to 24,000 pounds for every 10 Ethernets that you deploy. Um, it's completely different to everyone in the market. We've exclusively made this available to Pangea partners only. And um, if anyone would like to come on and be a partner and get in touch with that product, um, I would encourage you to do so either at our email address or just um, get in touch with us from the YouTube video. It's been very successful. Uh, we've deployed with some large clients. And as I said, um, for every 10 Ethernets you deploy, we think we can find about 24,000 pounds of additional revenue. Um, and if that's not worth talking about, then I suppose we should probably look at selling something else. Um, on that note, I would also like to um, just say thank you very much to everyone who's been tuning in recently. Uh, we've had a lot of good feedback, and if you do have any comments, please do in this um, YouTube video. Uh, Dan Kandler for our July video log, signing off. Please do follow us on Twitter, which is at Pangea Connected. Have a look for us on LinkedIn if you search for Pangea Connecting Everything, um, as well as just the old normal way, which is email, which is contact at pangea-group.net. Thanks so much. Have a really good end of your month.